Hi everybody, I'm Maxime Bonnier, I'm a Senior Developer Advocate at MongoDB, and today I want to talk to you about Quarkus and Java, and how you can create a really cool CRUD REST API using Quarkus and Java. So let's jump right in. I encourage you to read this blog post I wrote about this topic, and basically in this blog post I explain how everything works and how you can do it yourself. Just to get things going a bit faster here, I will use my GitHub repository, but first of all, let's see what Quarkus is. So if we go to the Quarkus website, we see that Quarkus is a Java supersonic and subatonic framework. It's compatible with Kubernetes a lot, actually. It's container first oriented. So it's very cool for microservices and stuff like that. And it's also very cool because there is something they call developer joy. So it has like this kind of zero config and live reloading when you code, which is really convenient and cool to use. Also, Quarkus is known to work very, very well with Graal VM, which is another kind, I would say, of a GVM that you can use to run your project. And as you can see here, Quarkus plus Graal VM is like the ultimate combo to have the lowest memory footprint and the lowest started time. As you can see here on those graphs, you can start a Quarkus plus native application built for a Graal VM in like 0.016 seconds, rather than like if you build something on Spring Boot, for example, and you start it, before you get the first answer, you gonna have to wait for like four seconds or so. And of course, that's not acceptable at all for when you use microservices or when you use like uh, Lambda functions or like some kind of method uh, as a service or something like that in the cloud. You can't wait like four seconds before anything happens, of course. So that's what Quarkus is and why we use it. So how is this happening? Like, why is this happening? So basically the answer lies in the build and how an application is built usually with Java and how it's done with Quarkus and, and Graal VM. So usually when you package an application with Java, you just assemble everything. And when you start the application, that's when the, the GVM is doing all the work. So it's like scanning all the classes, calculating the class path, scanning the configuration files, et cetera, et cetera. That's basically what Spring Boot is doing. But with Quarkus, you actually do as much as you can before. So like any useless class, anything that can be done before the execution time, before the runtime, it's pre-calculated and done already ahead of time. So the building time takes more time with Quarkus and Graal VM, but in the end, the runtime is a lot faster, right? So that, that's the whole point of it. You need also to install Graal VM for this project. So you have the documentation on graalvm.org. Depending on your operating system, you can just click here and follow the instructions to install this GVM on your machine. Also, now we can just get going and build our first project. So just like Spring Initializer, if you if you know Spring and, and Spring Boot, you have uh, this website called code.quarkus.io and you can build your template project right here. So you can select your group and artifact, you can select your build tool, so Maven or, or, or Gradle, select the version for Java, and then you can just select the dependencies that you need for your project. So here we need Mongo client, we need the uh, small right uh, open API, which is for Swagger UI. It's optional here, but it's always cool to have Swagger and automatic documentation. We need REST and we need REST Jackson, right? So you can see here, everything is ticked ready for me. So we have REST, which is Quarkus REST dependency, Quarkus REST Jackson. And if we scroll down a bit, we can see somewhere this small Rye open API, which is the uh, documentation for a Swagger UI. And then we have somewhere at the bottom here, we have MongoDB client, right? Which is Quarkus MongoDB client dependency. So I did already hold this, but if you want to do this as you follow the video, you just click here, download the zip file, unzip everything, and then you are more or less ready to go and you can just follow up. Uh, if you are a bit lazier, you can also just go to this GitHub repository. So it's in the mongodb-developer.org, the MongoDB GitHub organization and you can find this repository called Quarkus MongoDB CRUD. Of course, everything is also in the description below, so you can just click on, on the links, like the blog post and this GitHub repository will be in the description below. Everything is pre-built, everything already in this repository, so you can also just clone the repository and we can get going. So let's jump in the code and I can show you how to build a CRUD API uh, using Quarkus. So 
you will end up with a folder that looks something like this when you unzip the file, right? You have a lot of things already, like you have Maven already prepackaged, and you have a test folder and you have a Java folder with a default resource that I renamed. I think by default it's called Greeting Resource Java, and it just does a hello world, right? It just does basically this hello root that I kept actually for this example. I renamed the file here for the CRUD application. So as you can see, I want to manage a person entity in MongoDB. So I created this small Pojo class here with a basic ID, name, and age. I want to keep things very, very simple for this example. Created the constructors, hash code equal, and getters and setters. That's it. It's just a standard Pojo. Nothing really fancy that needs to be noticed, except maybe this uh, JSON serialize two string serializer that I use here, just to have this object ID transform correctly as a string in the API. That's it. To manipulate this entity, I created a repository. So a Mongo repository. The one thing we need to notice here is this add application scoped that we need to add to make this work. We can then instantiate Mongo client and Mongo collection that is initialized in the constructor here, right? And the injection of the Mongo client, it's just like Spring Boot. It's done automatically by Quarkus, so you don't need to worry about anything. The Mongo client will be automatically configured and injected. By the way, in the resources, we have the application properties, and this is where you're going to configure MongoDB. So basically here, I'm just passing my connection string. So right now I'm using a local node, but you can pass like your MongoDB Atlas connection string without any issue, of course. Back to my repository, then I can create like my four methods here for my CRUD operation. So we have an add function, get persons, an anniversary person method. So that's an update. And we have a delete person, right, by ID. So as you can see here, I'm doing my collection.insert one person, and then I retrieve the object ID as a hexadecimal string that I answer then back to the client. For the get person, I'm just doing this call.find, and I just dump the whole result set directly in a new array list that I can just uh, return. And then we have this update where I want to celebrate someone's anniversary by ID. So here we can just do a collection.update1 with a filter, which is just an equality on the object ID and an update, which is increment age by one, right? That's the dollar inc operator uh, in MongoDB. And then I just answer how many documents have been modified by this query. So it's zero or one maximum, because of course this is an update one and I'm doing this by ID as well. So of course I can't match more than one document anyway. And the delete, of course, it's collection.delete one by ID, right? Nothing really complicated here. Then we have this person resource. This is my main root API. So here I have the uh, pass slash API. This is like my global root. I can define the add consumes and add produce for application JSON. And then I can inject here my person repository. So in theory, I should use a service, but here I'm doing something really, really simple. So I don't want to make things more complicated with a service in the middle that is just a blank service that is just calling the repository. So here I'm calling directly the repository from the resource, but in theory, you should have a service layer. So here we are doing a get slash hello. So we just answer hello. That's the default route to get with the project when you download the zip file. And here I added those four routes. So the add post for slash person, the get for slash persons, add put for the anniversary, and the add delete to delete a person by ID, right? So I'm just calling the repository. There is really nothing fancy or complicated here. One thing you need to note here to not mess up the build, I had to change the pass. So slash API slash hello. Uh, by default, you just have to type slash hello. So now you have to type slash API slash hello to be able to reach that root here in the resource file. And in the test here as well, you have to modify this because the, the build is actually using the, the test. So just make sure you change as well the API here in the project. And that's it. Basically, you have everything in place where you can just run the build and it's just going to work. So when you download the zip file, by default, it comes with the readme. I kept most of the readme in this file, actually, so you can see all the commands and all the things. So with this command here, you can start the developer mode we, we talked about earlier. So it's just going to compile and have you run everything, but it's also going to refresh automatically 
and reload the code as you code, right? So if I add a new root, I would not have to restart this command to be able to just hit the new root with my curl command, for example. You can also package and you can package a Uber jar as well if you want to have a jar file. But the really exciting feature here is those two commands here. So the Maven package with the dash D native. So you can build this native application that you can then run on Gural VM. And same here, you can also build with uh, Docker. If you are missing a few dependencies on your PC, it's just going to use Docker directly, right? So this command here takes like about maybe one minute and a half, maybe two minutes to build the whole thing. It's a lot longer than a build, for example, done with Spring Boot. But the big difference here at the end is when you start the application. So if I make this a bit cleaner, and if I show you, so I build everything before this video. And here you can see this native file, you know, I was talking about. And you can see that if I start this, usually with Spring Boot, it's going to take maybe four, five, nine seconds or so to load, you know, the old GVM, the old class pass, all the classes, scan the configuration, boot everything and have everything ready to answer, you know, the first query, right? Here, just look at this. It's started in 0 0.032 seconds only, right? That's really huge. I could do a test here, but you, you can trust me that this is answering the right answers and this is, this is working, right? You can just test by yourself. That's really it. It's just that simple to build a REST API with Quarkus and, and Java and MongoDB. It's really not nothing complicated. So again, if you want to learn more and read more, you can uh, check out the blog post on the uh, developer center. Thank you very much for listening to this video. I hope you learned something today and I will see you in the next video. Bye.